Hello, I'm in Tasmania. Yesterday we did a seminar on using technology for language exchanges and today I'm here chatting with Harriet about her experiences learning Indonesian. Hi Harriet, how's it going? Yeah, good. Thanks Chris. <laughs> so you've done a lot of Indonesian study uh, in the past. Uh, can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, sure. So I'm studying a diploma of languages through UTAS. I started off actually because I'm also studying studying a Bachelor of Science at UTAS and I had to choose some breadth units and Indonesian was one of those and just a friend told me, oh, you know, you have to do these breadth units, you should try doing the introduction to Indonesian. So I did that, absolutely loved it, wanted to keep going so I opened the Diploma of Languages so that I could keep studying. Um, and since then I've studied two semesters at UTAS, did first year at UTAS on campus and then after that I moved to Medan in North Sumatra and studied another semester through UTAS online. And after that I moved to Jogjakarta and studied for a semester at UGM in Java. Um, and now I've just got one more unit to do that's not even Indonesian language, just another unit. And then I'll be finished my Diploma of Languages. Right. So you went to UGM? Yep, yeah, yeah that's right. How is it? How was it like studying there as an Australian student? Well, to be honest, like, it's pretty crazy, like it's more different than I expected studying at the university over there. Um, lots of things run really differently to universities in Australia. In some, in some ways that's good and in some ways it was a bit challenging or I wouldn't even say bad, I think it was just a bit hard for me to adjust to because I had such firm expectations of what a university should be like um, in Australia. Um, so what I'm talking about, I think the biggest challenge was the fact that in Australia we're so used to having everything very well planned out from the beginning of the semester. Like we have access to our unit schedule, all of our assessments, when the assessments will be due, what time our lectures are, etc. In Indonesia things were a lot more flexible, like dates of assessments would change without much notice or classes wouldn't be on or they'd be in a different place which we're used to having all of that information available online or if something's going to change we'll have an email but uh, Indonesian students are so well connected that all students in a class there will always be like a whatsapp group and there's just a constant conversation between all the students and there's usually like uh, like a student leader within the class who's kind of in charge of these whatsapp groups and they're in contact with the lecturer who's always just changing the schedule and the information. But as long as you just let go yeah. and go with the flow, then it actually works totally fine. It was just a bit of an adjustment to get used to that. And so WhatsApp, WhatsApp groups are essential then, not, not student email? Yeah, I would say WhatsApp groups are way more happening. If you're just checking your email, you're gonna miss a lot of stuff. And for Australian students, we're like way more into emails and Facebook, but in Indonesia, I feel like now, Facebook's almost a bit like what your mum uses. Like, Line and WhatsApp are def and Instagram yeah. are definitely the big ones now. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what, was, uh, what was the biggest, what was the best thing that you did while studying it? Mm, well, actually, directly like study wise, the best thing I did was one of my classes was an immersion class that was a practical class in Karawitan, like Gamelan music. So it was with all of the students in my class were from Sastra Jawa, so they were learning all about uh, Javanese literature and music and art. Um, and our class was just like a three hour practical session every week, playing all of the different gamelan music, um, memorizing it, memorizing all of the different parts until we could play like quite a few tunes through at the end. Yeah, it was a really amazing experience. So if you're thinking about studying at an Indonesian university, my biggest advice for you before you go would probably be acknowledge your expectations and then get rid of them. Just be extremely flexible, extremely adaptable and even though it's hard, try to let go of your rigid expectations for things. Say yes to everything and just go with whatever happens. <laughs> Um, and you went there with, uh, um, so you went there with the Chichis, right? Yes, exactly. So can you tell us um, so what is the Chichis or how did, you, how did that happen and, yep. and what was it like? Yeah, so in my second semester of studying at UTAS, my lecturer uh, told us about these Chichis programs that run in Java as semester programs for learning Indonesian. 
um, and told us about the amazing New Colombo plans scholarships that were available um, and I was already like spending quite a lot of time in Indonesia and going there quite regularly um, so it seemed like a really amazing way to be able to stay there and actually keep my study going while I was there instead of just being on holiday um, and also the most incredible thing about a teacher's really was that um, the hardest part of going on exchange, especially to a place like Indonesia, would be organising things like visas, enrolment at the university, organising your study plan. Um, those kinds of things are incredibly complex and would have taken so much time to organise myself. But through a teacher's, you kind of handed all that horrible bureaucratic work over to them. They got it done with all of the other students' visas and so on, which left us, the Achicha students, with way more time to do things we'd like to do, basically. Yeah, right. yep. so that was really incredible. Yep, exactly, so much easier. If you want to go travelling, Indonesia is so much closer than any other place, really. It's relatively cheap to get there and relatively cheap once you're there. And but you can get or but you can only get by in English in very limited places like Indonesia is so incredibly big and diverse in so many ways and the parts of Indonesia that you have access to speaking English is like I don't know one percent of Indonesia but speaking Indonesia which is taught in schools in all all over Indonesia that opens up such a wide range of places that you could visit or communicate with so many more people to learn about different ways of life and stuff. I just have one, it's like my best tip so ever. <laughs> my best tip ever for learning Indonesian, which I didn't even realize it was going to be so successful at the time. But what I did when I was living in Jogja was, so I've, I'm really into Harry Potter. I read all the Harry Potter books as a kid, probably reread them as a teenager. So I'm really familiar with the story. So what I did is I went to a bookshop, bookshop and bought Harry Potter books in Indonesian. and. I couldn't understand every word in it for sure, but because I was so familiar with the story, I could guess so many words and just by reading through, I knew what was going to happen. I could guess so many words and I felt like it was a really, really fast way to build my vocabulary because I, and I didn't have to check every word in the dictionary because it was kind of obvious by context and what I already was expecting to read. So yeah, reading and I've done it with other books as well, like reading. Um, or even watching a movie that you've already heard or reading a book that you've already read in English, in Indonesian, yeah. I think is a really good thing to do. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to learn more about Indonesia or studying in Indonesia, don't forget to click on the link in the description. Yeah.